Is it possible to light up an entire studio space using only LumCube products? Let's find out. Hello friends and welcome back to the studio. This is Susie with Gemini Connect. I am actually in a slightly different studio space, which I'll explain more in future videos. But I'm here today with LumCube. And if you haven't heard about LumCube, these are waterproof, crush-proof, action LED lights. And these are really great for shooting outdoors. So we use these a lot with our GoPros whenever we're vlogging outside, doing travel videos. I actually owned the LumCube Air before we got these, but these are the LumCube 2.0 lights. And this video is done in partnership with LumCube. They're not exactly sponsoring this video, but they did gift us these LumCube lights. And if you use the link down below to purchase LumCubes, then we get a small kickback at no extra cost to you. So we're working with LumCube on that basis. But even before we had this partnership with LumCube, these were one of my favorite lights for shooting our GoPro vlogs. And the really nice thing as well is that LumCube has expanded um, beyond these action lights. And they now have extra accessories such as this LumCube Panel Pro. So you can purchase LumCubes by themselves. They're about $90 individually, but you can also get two LumCubes in addition to a bunch of lighting modifiers if you purchase this set. So this set is I think a little bit over $300, but it includes not only the two LumCubes, but also this magnetic frame, and then a bunch of lighting modifiers you can attach to the frame via the magnets. And these are really great modifiers for helping shape the light. You've got some barn doors, you've got a snoot, and you've got all kinds of colored filters to change the color of the light. So I really like that it also came with a big zippered case. So you can essentially have all of your lighting kit inside of this little case, which is pretty remarkable because normally studio lighting takes up a lot more space. And since I mentioned studio lighting, the light that I'm using right now to illuminate this room is a single light. It's a falconized light. I talked about it in a previous video. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to learn more about it. But I really like this light because it's big, so it has a nice even spread, and it also packs down really easily, so it's great for travel. So generally speaking, it's better to have a bigger light like this falconized light because the bigger the light source, the softer the shadows and the more pleasing your subject is going to look on camera. However, it's not always practical to be traveling with a big light. So that's why I'm really excited to give these LumCube lights a test and see if I can use these small lights to illuminate a room like this. So besides these three LumCube lights, we're also gonna need some of the lighting modifiers inside of this kit, and we're gonna need some light stands. Now, luckily, LumCube is now making a light stand, which I didn't even know about, but this is one of the light stands that they make, and it is super compact when it's folded up. I think this shrinks down into about 14 inches tall, but it can also have these columns that extend up, and it ends up being about five feet tall when it's fully extended. And on top, there's also a little mount with a quarter inch tripod thread for attaching lights such as these loom cubes. Or you can even put on, you know, like a small camera. I think it has a capacity of up to 11 pounds. So a small camera like a GoPro, a point and shoot, or even a smartphone could actually fit on this light stand. So it can actually function as a tripod. But this is one light stand that we're gonna need. We're also gonna need another light stand. But before I dig into all of that, let's talk a little bit more about this lighting setup here and how we're gonna go about using it. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off all these lights so you can see what I'm working with without lighting. So now the Falcon Eyes light is shut off. So now we're just left with the ambient light. So I've got some recessed lighting up ahead. And so that's really what's lighting me right now. But as you can see, it's still pretty dark. And that's because the camera is set on manual settings. Our shutter speed is set to 1 50th of a second just because we're shooting at 4K 24 frames per second. And we want our shutter speed to be double that of our frame rate. I've also got the aperture set to f4. The ISO was set at 800, but as you can see, I can 
punch that ISO up. So now the ISO, it was previously at 800, but now it's at 3200. So you can see that that really makes a big difference just by bumping up that ISO. However, this is still not great lighting. I would say it's acceptable if you have truly nothing else. But what we're gonna try to do is use our external lights to improve this whole setup. So the very first thing we want to do is establish our key light, which was our falconized light. But now we're going to take this LumQ Panel Pro and try to make this our key light. So the first thing we want to do is grab a light stand. You could use this Loom Cube light stand, but we're actually going to use this for another light. So we're going to put this down for a minute and we're gonna work with this light stand instead. So this is a super lightweight Manfrotto light stand, which I've had for years. It's worked really, really well. It's great for travel. But on top of it, we also have this umbrella bracket. And this umbrella bracket is important for mounting our light to the light stand and also adding our lighting modifier. So the first thing we wanna do is take this little adapter piece. I don't know the name of it, but I'll leave a link in the description below to it. But it has a quarter inch tripod thread on top. So we're gonna take this and attach it to the bottom of the LumQ Panel Pro. So there we go, we have this adapter to the bottom of the light. Now we're gonna stick this light on top of the umbrella adapter here. And now we have the light mounted to the light stand. So the next thing is this lighting modifier. So actually, before we add the modifier, let me show you what it looks like without the modifier. So I'm over here on camera right. This is where I'm gonna stick my key light. We're gonna hold down the top button to turn on the Panel Pro. So right now the light is at 100% super bright, but I can dim it down to 5%. So it's really great to have that flexibility to control the light depending on how much of it you need at the time. So for now, we're actually gonna keep it fairly high. We're gonna keep it at maybe 70%. And the battery life, by the way, is really great on this thing. It lasts, I think, about two and a half hours at 100% when it's fully charged. So after I have the Panel Pro set up into place, the next thing you wanna do is turn off that ambient light. So now our ambient light is turned off and the light is powered primarily by that LumCube Panel Pro at this point. As you can see, the light is super strong. It's only at 75%, it can actually go up even higher. But this is 75% along with a built-in diffuser on top, which you can actually take off. I don't recommend taking it off, but I will just to show you the difference. So here's that diffuser. I slid it off of the Panel Pro, and as you can see, it made quite a big difference. The light is a lot harsher, and it's a lot harder to look at. So in general, especially if you have a subject, I'd recommend using this diffuser just to soften that light. Whew, okay, I put the diffuser back on that Panel Pro, and it's a lot easier to look at. But as you can see, there's a giant shadow now, just because this light is still really strong. So we need additional diffusion on top of that little diffusing panel. And this is where this comes in. So this is an umbrella. There's actually several ways to use this umbrella. It's a umbrella specific to photography or videography. But what I like to use it for a lot is this silky part here. So this can be an extra layer of diffusion. So we're gonna add this umbrella to the umbrella adapter on the light stand in front of the LumCube Panel Pro. So the LumCube Panel Pro now has that umbrella diffuser in front. As you can see, it made a huge difference in terms of softening that light. So I did have to kick up the power to 100% as opposed to 75%, but our camera settings are still the same. We're still at a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second, shooting at f4, and the ISO is up to 3200, but this light is a lot more pleasing. Now, if this background shadow still bothers you, something you can do is move your subject a little bit closer to the camera and further away from the background. So there we go, I actually moved myself a little bit closer, and as you can see, that back shadow is still there, but it's a lot less noticeable. So the next thing we wanna do is introduce our other Loom Cube lights. So we're gonna take this Loom Cube, it already has the magnetic adapter on front, and we're gonna take, I think, these barn doors. So these barn doors just snap on magnetically, and then I can pull them out. And these are really great for shaping the light so that you can make sure that it's only going in a single or a certain direction and not spilling too far out 
of bounds. We're also gonna take our loom cube light stand here and put our loom cube on top of it. Now we're gonna power on the loom cube just by holding down the button. And it also is pretty bright, not quite as bright as the Panel Pro, but still really bright. And I can control the brightness with the buttons. So it gets even brighter than it was earlier. So now we're gonna take this Loom Cube on the light stand and we're gonna point it at the backdrop here, just to add a little bit of interest so it's not just a plain black background. And you can probably see those barn doors in action right now. We can use them to make all kinds of shapes or just have them wide open like this. So as you can see, that makes a pretty big difference. And this light again is super small, but look at how powerful it is. It's lighting up almost the entire wall behind me. So another thing that I could do is play around further with these lighting modifiers. I could add a snoot. The snoot would give this even more of a spotlight effect. So let's go ahead and put this guy on. So you can see that the snoot is like super targeted. It gives it like almost a spotlight effect. I can pull that light a bit further and also extend the light stand to be even taller and kind of just aim it like directly behind my head. I mean, it's just a different look, not necessarily the best look. So let's take this snoot off. And we can also take some of these colored filters and change the color of the light. So I went ahead and added a green filter on top, as you can see behind me. But the nice thing is because these are magnetic filters, you can actually stack them on top of each other. So if I wanted to, I could even add these barn doors back on top. And it is so easy to do thanks to that magnetic adapter. So the final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the second loom cube and we're gonna use it to illuminate the front of my desk here. So to do that, we need another light stand. You can use any light stand of your choice, but I'm gonna go with this desk mount because this is what I have handy. And this is a really cool stand because it attaches to the side of a desk or a cabinet or a table, and it doesn't require any nails or make any damage to the desk. So this I think is like a podcasting stand meant to have a microphone on it, but I went ahead and modified it by adding another umbrella adapter. And at the end of the adapter is a cold shoe mount. And so I can attach the loom cube light if I use this additional cold shoe piece. So this has a quarter inch tripod thread on one end, which I'm gonna to attach directly to the loom cube. And then the cold shoe mount is gonna go right here on the umbrella adapter. Now, as we saw earlier, this loom cube light is really strong on its own, even when it's dimmed down. So I'm gonna take this little diffusion dome here, and also we're gonna take a colored filter. We're gonna take this warming filter. This is warm level four. This is gonna go on the magnet adapter first, and then we're gonna take this diffusion dome and put this on as well. And there we go, the Loom Cube is powered on, it's got that warming filter and a diffusion dome, and it actually can get even more powerful. So I can make it even brighter, depending on you know, how much lighting I need or how much lighting I want. We're gonna go down to about that brightness. And as you can see, that final light really ties our whole scene together. Gives me a lot more lighting and it also illuminates my desk here. So I can better show you what all I'm talking about on camera. Now, of course, this arm is kind of in the way, so we might have to adjust our camera angle. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so there you have it. After adjusting the camera angles and kind of fine tuning the lights, here's my final lighting setup using only three Loom Cube lights. Is this the most perfect setup in the whole world? No, there's probably lots more to be done with it. But that's the nice thing about having a kit like this modifier kit from Loom Cube is that you can use all of these modifiers and a combination of lights to make the lighting setup that you're looking for. And so I hope that this video inspired you and showed you that you don't need really big expensive studio lights to make an impact and to make videos. So I had a lot of fun playing with these Loom Cubes. I am genuinely surprised at how versatile they were and how I was able to use them in a studio setting. This studio setup is pretty new and I'm still kind of working it out, but I honestly learned so much using these Loom Cubes and I'll probably use elements of them in my final studio setup. 
So let me know in the comments if you have any questions, ideas for future videos. Uh, I again will be making more videos about this studio setup as it evolves. So stay tuned for videos like that and other videos relating to making photos and videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.